Hello, I hope I am audible to you all. Yes, ma'am, it's yeah. audible. Yeah. Hello and welcome everyone to the second interactive uh, live session of the course Microwave Engineering. I am Susan, PhD scholar at uh, Electrical Engineering Department, IIT Madras. Uh, so, as uh, last week we had a, a one hour session of uh, problem solving. Uh, so today also we will have a, a problem solving session based on the content of week 2. Uh, so uh, I'll try to uh, solve some sample problems and clarify your doubts. And I will try to start the session with a brief summary of the uh, content covered in the previous week. Uh, I hope uh, you have already gone through the lectures, video lectures uh, uploaded last week. And uh, yeah. So uh, I hope the last week's session was helpful for you to attempt uh, the first week's assignment and I, uh, so let me start. Uh, so this week, uh, I mean the last week or the week two, uh, the syllabus covered is rectangular and uh, circular waveguides. So as you all see uh, a waveguide is a kind of metallic tube, hollow metallic tube uh, which guides the electromagnetic waves and uh, you see that two different types of uh, waveguides that is rectangular and circular that's based on the cross section. So if it's a rectangular cross section we say that is a rectangular waveguide and uh, if it is a, a circular cross section for the tube uh, we call it as a circular waveguide and we see that uh, electric and magnetic fields are confined within that uh, waveguide. So I hope uh, you could uh, uh, distinguish between uh, what is a, a TE, TM and TEM wave. So, uh, so let us start our discussion uh, with understanding of uh, uh, distinguishing, distinguishing between these two, these three types of uh, uh, waves. Uh, so can you, anybody uh, uh, in the chat box or uh, tell me uh, what is a TE wave and or what is TM wave and what is TEM wave? So you you can uh, uh, write what you could understand from the video lectures you can always uh, tap type in the chat box or uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, talk Ma'am, in transverse electric mode, hello, I am Jointarai Chaudhuri. Yeah. In transverse electric mode, uh, that if the direction of propagation of the electromagnetic wave is uh, in the Z direction, then electric field in the Z direction will be zero and magnetic field in the Z direction will not be equal to zero. That is for T. And for yes. TM, just the opposite. Magnetic field in the Z direction will be zero and electric field in the Z direction will not be equal to zero for TM and for TEM. Uh, electric and magnetic fields will be transversed to the direction of propagation of the electromagnetic Okay, okay. Thank you, Jayanto Roy Chaudhary. So, uh, let me, uh, uh, as uh, he said, uh, let me uh, ask you a question about TEM wave. Uh, so, my question is, uh, all of you can write in the chat box, what do you think about this? Will TEM wave exist on in the waveguide. Will TEM wave exist in the waveguide? Mount TEM wave doesn't exist on the rectangular wave gate. Okay. Doesn't exist on the rectangular wave gate. Okay, okay. So, uh, so ma'am, TEM wave, in my opinion, will not exist in any waveguide that is either rectangular or circular. Mm. In rectangular and circular, only TEM, 
TE and TM wave will exist, and TEM mm. will exist in coaxial cable. Yes. Uh, yes. Because uh, TE T, uh, because wave guides are single conductors, and coaxial cables are two parallel conductors. So without two parallel conductors, a TEM wave cannot exist. Yes. Yes. That's the right answer. So TEM wave cannot exist in the wave guides because wave guide is basically a single conductor system. TEM wave can exist only in uh, uh, in a coaxial cable that means a kind of a two conductor system where you have one conductor separated from the other conductor with the dielectric or so. So let me uh, try to uh, go into some more details of the course. Uh, so we had discussed uh, I mean the course instructor had discussed about the uh, TE and TM modes in rectangular waveguides and uh, circular waveguides. So I hope you could understand uh, how uh, the professor has solved the Maxwell's equation to get the electric and magnetic fields in the uh, waveguides. So uh, there are few uh, there there were a discussion there was a discussion on uh, uh, attenuation in rectangular and circular waveguides as well. So I hope uh, uh, the lectures had been very clear to you. So let me uh, go to learn to solve problems. So let us uh, try the first question. Uh, I hope uh, all of you will try to uh, attempt this question with me and uh, try to find the answers. So let us uh, discuss and uh, do it. So the first question is about an air filled rectangular waveguide. So let's see this is a question from rectangular waveguide and the medium or, or the dielectric is uh, basically air uh, and the dimension is A into B centimeters and the cutoff frequency for TE11 mode in the waveguide is 16.62 percentage higher than the cutoff frequency of TE01 mode. If B, so one of the dimensions is given, is equal to 3 cm, what is the cutoff frequency of TE10 mode? So, you are given with an information about TE11 mode and TE01 mode. There is a relation between the cutoff frequencies of these two and also you are given with the dimension. Uh, you have been asked to find the cutoff frequency of TE10 mode. So let us first understand what is cutoff frequency. So could anybody tell me what is this cutoff frequency of the waveguide? What could you understand about the cutoff frequency? It is the minimum frequency passes through the waveguide, ma'am. Lowest frequency passes through the, it is the waveguide. It is the minimum frequency above which there is propagation, modal propagation inside the waveguide. Yes, yes. So, this is the frequency above which there is a propagation and whenever F less than Fc, there is an attenuation in the waveguide. So, basically that is what we call it as uh, the waves attenuate exponentially and we call it as evanescent modes whereas the condition where F greater than Fc are the propagating modes. So, say in case of a rectangular waveguide, we write the Fc as C by 2 into root of M by A the whole square plus N by B the whole square. So I am not going into any of the details but you can understand that C is the speed of light M and N. So M and N represents the uh, mode say if it is TE11 M is equal to 1 N is equal to 1. Uh, if it is TE10, M is equal to 1 and N is equal to 0. And A and B are the dimensions of the rectangular waveguide. So A is the longer dimension and B is the shorter dimension. So this would be the uh, waveguide. So, so let me uh, try to come to our question because our aim of this session is to uh, solve the questions. Uh, so the cutoff frequency of TE11 mode. So let us see how to write the cutoff frequency of TE11 mode. So that will be C by 2 into root of 
1 by a the whole square plus 1 by b the whole square. So this is the cutoff frequency of T E 1 1 mode. And uh, that is going to be 16.62 percentage. 16.62 percentage higher than the cutoff frequency of T E 0 1 mode. So let us see what is the cutoff frequency of T E 0 1 mode. So that is going to be C divided by. So when I say 0 1. M goes to 0 and N goes to 1. So, I can write it as C by 2P. So, this is for the TE11 mode and this is for the TE01 mode. So, this is the cutoff frequencies. So, these cutoff frequencies are related. So, the second is 16.62 percentage higher than the first one. So let me write it. When I say 16.62% higher, I can write it as Fc of Te11 is equal to 1.1662 Fc of Te01. I hope this all of you agree with me. So when I say 16.62% higher, so I have to write it as 100 and 100 plus 16. So that becomes uh, 160 and we write it as 1.1662. 1 uh, and now to solve this, it is very simple. We already know the expressions. So I can write it as C by 2 into square root of 1 by A the whole square plus 1 by B the whole square is equal to C by 2B into 1.1662. So here the C by 2, C by 2 cancels. And we know one dimension that is B. B value is known to us that is 3 centimeters. So if I try to substitute that 3 centimeters here, I will get it as, so let me solve this 1 by A the whole square plus 1 by B the whole square. Squaring both the sides, this becomes 1.1662 divided by b can be written as 3 and this is whole square. So basically you can find out the, va the value of a. Uh, I hope you are trying to solve this question. Uh, can anybody tell? Uh, type in the chat uh, what is the value of a? If you could uh, solve. So I hope you can solve out A to be 5 centimeters. Yeah, 4.99. Thank you, thank you. So 5 centimeters A. Uh, and so the question, let us look at the question once again. What is being asked? Cutoff frequency of TE10 mode. So let us see what is the cutoff frequency of TE10 mode. M goes to 1 and n goes to 0. So we get Fc is C by 2a. So this is the cutoff frequency of Te10 mode. So we know what is the value of 5. So it is easy for us. C is 3 into 10 power 10 centimeter per second and 2 into 5 centimeters. So this turns out to be, uh, so can anybody tell me what is the frequency?
can you please try to calculate the frequency yes so we get the frequency as 3 gigahertz so answer option b yes i hope this question is clear this is a very standard question often found in the gate question papers as well uh, try to solve these kind of questions and understand so let us go to the next problem that is again about uh, air filled waveguide has internal dimension so this dimension is going to be a and b so this is given to us for this waveguide the guide wavelength at the operating frequency of 9 gigahertz so this question is about the guide wavelength so i can write denote it as lambda g so that is a guide wavelength so lambda g expression is lambda naught divided by root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square so this had been derived in the lectures so lambda naught is the uh, operating wavelength and fc is the cutoff frequency and f is the uh, operating frequency so let's say what is the operating frequency here that is 9 gigahertz and uh, we need to understand what is fc here uh, so fc is the cutoff frequency uh, so this uh, this can be even written as lambda naught by root of 1 minus lambda by lambda c the whole square so here uh, it is we need to take fc that is the cutoff frequency for te10 mode which is a dominant mode
A equals to like uh, 50 percent greater than B, then you can write A equals to 1.5 times B. Okay, so if something is equal, then it's one, and if it is you know 50 percent greater, then you add 0.5 to that. Okay, and this is something you can just check. So in that way, if it's 16 percent, then you just add 0.16. Okay, uh, did I make it clear? Sir, in which book uh, have I referred for this point? I mean, it is a general thing in math, I guess. You can just figure it out, you know. A equals to B is the same way as saying A is 1 times B. And A is 0 greater, 0 percent. A is 0 percent. A equals to 1.0 times B. If you want to say A is 50% greater than B, that means A is, you know, 1.5 times B. Oh, so right. now if you want to tell, yeah, so it's uh, just a, yeah, yeah, no worries. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Hello. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, so I had a power issue on my laptop. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, thank you, Subhashish, for and Hemlata keeping uh, the discussion on uh, it's okay i yeah. have one doubt so i have clar sir has clarified my doubt thank i you. have to say thank you ma'am <laughs> thank, thank you thank you sir. thank you so uh, i hope uh, i can move ahead with the second problem so as i was discussing uh, so i can rewrite this equation in the form of lambda naught by root of 1 minus lambda by lambda c the whole square so as I was saying, uh, we are seeing the dominant mode TE10. The cutoff wavelength is lambda C is equal to 2 into A, where A is 22.86 millimeters. Uh, and lambda is C by F, where F is the operating frequency, that is 9 gigahertz. So let us see. Uh, uh, you can all try to calculate lambda naught uh, and lambda c and uh, find out the guide wavelength. Please try to substitute and uh, try to see if you could get these answers, any of these options as the answer. So, lambda is going to be 3 into 10 power 10 by f is 9 gigahertz, 9 into 10 power 9. So, this is going to be 3.33 centimeters and lambda c is going to be 2 into 2.286 centimeters. So, this comes out to be 4.572 centimeters and once you get these two you can directly go to this formula so any of these formulas you can use it's up to you uh, both of them will give you the same answer uh, somebody has given the answer for lambda naught okay that's right lambda naught is right Can somebody give me the answer for lambda g? So as uh, we are running out of time, uh, I would like to give you the answer. You can always try to find the answer. Uh, 4.86 centimeters uh, will be the guided wavelength once if you substitute these uh, numbers. So the option C. Ma'am, what is lambda naught value, ma'am? So this is uh, so. Okay, let me try to make it more clear to you. Maybe this is little confusing. So lambda naught is same. So don't confuse. It's the same operating wavelength. Oh, okay, thank you. 
so i hope i can go to the next question okay so third question is again about an air filled rectangular wave guide having dimensions uh, so there is a condition here a is equal to 2b that is dimension a is equal to 2 times b and operated at a frequency 30% above the cutoff frequency of the dominant mode this is something similar to the first question so hope uh, the discussion helped you to uh, find out uh, uh, how is the how how do we write uh, if we know that one cutoff frequency say its operated frequency is 30% above fc of the dominant mode so when i say dominant mode it is te10 mode so i am saying that the operating wavelength is 30% above fc of te10 mode so i have to write it as so 1.3 times fc of te10 this is my operating frequency so 30% above means 130 so 130 by 100 we write it as 1.3 times fc so so i hope uh, this is clear to you and uh, let me try to clear little more so how do we write fc of te10 mode so that will be te10 mode as we have already seen now it can be written as c by 2a so and this is going to be the uh, operating frequency and the question is on the phase velocity vp so vp is the phase velocity which can be written as c by square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square where c is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second and fc is uh, uh, you know fc is c by 2a and f not or f is the is one and the same operating frequency is uh, either denoted as f not or maybe it's better to denote it as f not so fc by f not so we basically need to say that f not is 1.3 times fc so i can directly write it here 3 into 10 power 8 divided by root of 1 minus fc by f not will be 1 by 1.3 the whole square i hope this is clear can anybody give me the final answer final answer for phase velocity yeah so the answer is as uh, joyanto said uh, the answer is 4.695 into 10 power 8 meter per second option c so the key idea is how do we write this the statement that is f not is the operating frequency is 30% above cutoff frequency so this is how we write this so if you know this the rest of the steps are easy so let's go to the next problem consider an air filled way rectangular wave guide of internal dimensions a and b where a is equal to 2 times b uh, if the wave guide is operated at a frequency 20% above the cutoff frequency of the dominant mode so again it's a similar question 20% above the cutoff frequency of dominant mode wave impedance is at te so please uh, correct this as is at te so wave impedance of the te wave so that so this is basically a subscript z is the impedance and te is a subscript which denotes that it is for the te wave so let me look at uh, 
the statement once again. So, waveguide is operated at a frequency. So, operating wavelength, operating frequency is 20% above cutoff frequency of dominant mode. Whenever we uh, look at dominant mode, we have to remember that it is TE10 mode. So, and I can write it as F0 is equal to, so 20% above, we write it as 120 by 100. So, 1.2 Fc of TE10 mode. Now, how do we, uh, uh, what is the expression for wave impedance? So, as uh, seen in the lectures, I hope you remember eta naught divided by root of 1 minus Fc by F, the whole square. Where eta naught is the free space wave impedance. So, I hope all of you know the value of eta naught, the free space impedance. Can anybody type in the chat? Yeah, 377 ohms. And uh, we need to see Fc by F ratio. So, here Fc by F naught. Sorry, let me write it as F naught once again. So, Fc by F naught is going to be 1 by 1.2. So, ZTE can be written as 377 divided by root of 1 minus Fc by F naught is 1 by 1.2 the whole square. So, can anybody give me the answer for this? If you can calculate quickly. Yeah, thank you Kalpana. 682 ohms. So, option D. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so far we had discussed about uh, rectangular waveguides and some sample problems on rectangular waveguides. Now, let us move on to circular waveguides. So, as you have seen circular waveguides, uh, so the cross section is a circular uh, shape. Uh, having a radius like A. Okay. And uh, I hope uh, you remember. I hope you remember the cutoff expression for cutoff frequency. Fc is equal to rho mn divided by 2 pi A into square root of mu epsilon. So, let me just discuss uh, quickly only about the parameters in this cutoff frequency expression because it is really helpful. Uh, as you see here, this is the cutoff frequency Fc is equal to rho mn. So, rho mn is basically uh, the, so I have to write it like rho nm to make it uh, more clear. So, rho nm is available for this out from this table so even uh, during the examination you will be given with this table uh, for rho nm so you see the difference here this is for t and this is for tm so to solve problems on uh, cutoff frequency of uh, circular waveguides you may require this table because the value of rho nm is from this table and if say, if it is uh, say I have, so I, I can take one example. I want to find for TE10 mode. So when I say TE10 mode, M is equal to 1, N is equal to 0. So I am going for rho 0, 1. Okay. Let me see what is rho 0, 1 in TE table. So, rho 0, 1 in TE table is 3.832. So, I hope you are uh, getting my point. Similarly, for TM, we need to look at this table. Okay. So, and 
uh, let me uh, clarify this once again a is the radius of the circular waveguide and mu and epsilon is the uh, dielectric uh, permittivity and permeability of the uh, medium which is being filled in the circular waveguide so if it is free space we can take it as mu naught epsilon naught if it is not a free space uh, we have to uh, modify this equation as uh, mu naught epsilon naught mu r epsilon r okay so that's the only point i which i wanted to make before going into the problems on circular wave guides so let us move on to the problems so the first uh, question on circular wave guide is a dielectric filled circular wave guide so so far uh, if you have noticed you had been seeing that uh, air filled wave guide rectangular wave guide so here there is a dielectric field so when i say dielectric field so in the circular wave guide inside the wave guide we have a dielectric with some dielectric uh, permittivity value so or dielectric constant value so that is being given as 1.69 okay and uh, cut off frequency for the dominant te11 mode so if you have noticed in rectangular wave guide we used to say the dominant mode is te10 whereas in circular wave guides we have te11 mode is the dominant mode so when, when uh, so i hope you remember what is dominant mode it is the mode with the least cut off frequency so let us see how do we uh, evaluate this so we already know the equation for cut off frequency rho nm divided by 2 pi a root of mu epsilon so mu epsilon can be written as mu naught mu r epsilon naught epsilon r so mu r is 1 uh, mu naught epsilon naught epsilon r so we already know that 1 by root of mu naught epsilon naught is c so rho nm into c divided by 2 pi a into root epsilon r so this cutoff frequency is known to you so 5 gigahertz 5 into 10 power 9 and rho nm so because it is te11 mode so we need to find out rho 11 for te rho 11 of te so te rho 11 will be 1.841 so i hope you can look at the table and find out what is the value for the row 1.841 1 1.841 so this will be 5 into 10 power 9 is equal to 1.841 into c value is 3 into 10 power let us say we take in centimeters into 10 power 10 divided by 2 pi a a is the radius of the waveguide which we need to find and root epsilon r is 1 point root of 1.69 from this you can calculate hope uh, you are able to get this can you please uh, solve this quickly? <coughs> yeah, Kalpana, you are right. The answer is 1.35 centimeters. Yeah, yes, Joyanto. Now your answer is right. Okay. Uh, so let us uh, move on to another question from circular waveguide. So in a circular waveguide, the cutoff frequency of TM01 mode. So here you notice it is a TM01. TM 
n is equal to 0, n is equal to 1. So, Fc is rho mn divided by 2 pi a root mu epsilon. Because uh, there is no mention of dielectric, we assume that this is uh, air, air filled circular wave guide. So, we can take it as mu naught epsilon naught. And this is given to you. Uh, so, about Tm01 mode. So, that will be, so I have to re rewrite this as rho nm. So, rho nm will be rho 10 divided by 2 pi a. A into C. So, 1 by root mu naught epsilon naught is C. So, this will be 6 gigahertz, 6 into 10 power 9. You need to find the cutoff frequency for TE11 mode. So, this is case of TM10, sorry, TM01. You need to find for TE11. So, how about TE11? FC is rho 11 divided by 2 pi a root of mu, 1 by root of mu naught epsilon naught can be written as C. can be written as FCTM and this can be written as FCTB. So, you need to look at the table for, uh, so basically we need to find uh, rho 10 for TM. TM rho 10 So, this is going to be 2.405 and uh, solving this uh, row 1 1 is basically 1 1.841. So, 2.405 divided by 1 1.841. So, if you take the ratio of these two, say like FCTM divided by FCTE. If you take a ratio of these two, you get it as 1.306. So, from that, I can say what is FCTE. That will be FCTM, that is 6 into 10 power 9, divided by 1.306, which will be, uh, I think, 4.59 gigahertz. So, this is option C. So, during the uh, examination also, you will be, you will have to look at the uh, uh, row uh, MNM table and uh, find out the uh, appropriate value of row NM or probably you will be given with uh, row NM of uh, TE or TM, whichever is applicable in your case. So, I hope this is clear. Let us move on to the next question. So, this is interesting. Uh, air filled rectangular wave guide uh, with A is equal to 2B and A is equal to 3 centimeters. So, so let us assume we have a rectangular wave guide okay, and A and B where A is equal to 3 centimeters. And there is a circular wave guide okay. having a radius 
having a radius r. These two, uh, so we are trying to relate these two. A circular waveguide of radius r has same cutoff frequency for the dominant mode as that of a rectangular waveguide. So let us look at what is the dominant mode in case of rectangular waveguide and what is the dominant mode in case of a circular waveguide. Uh, the question is, question says that these two cutoff frequencies are same. So let us say Fc of rectangular waveguide's dominant mode. So rectangular waveguide, the dominant mode is Ge10. So can that is same as cutoff frequency of circular waveguide dominant mode. So I hope you remember the dominant mode of a circular waveguide is Te11. So these two cutoff frequencies are being equated. Now let us write the expression. So what is the cutoff frequency of a rectangular waveguide with 30E10 mode? C by 2 times A which is equal to this Te11 mode. That will be rho nm divided by 2 pi a root of mu epsilon. So rho nm can be written as rho 11. Okay. So we need to find what is rho 11 and substitute there. So, one by, uh, so this is air filled waveguide. So I can take this as root of. So uh, this is mentioned as air filled rectangular waveguide. So we take the assumption that circular waveguide is also air filled. Okay. Although it is not given in the question. Uh, so we take it as rho uh, air filled. So C by 2A is equal to rho 11 by 2 pi A. So 2, 2 gets cancelled. Rho 11 value from the table it is 1.841. And A Oh, sorry, please don't write it as A here. This is R here. So please try to understand the difference. In case of rectangular waveguide, the longer dimension is A. And uh, please uh, rewrite. Um, this, uh, this is the inner radius. A is nothing but R. So these two doesn't get cancelled. So please don't do that. Okay. So, and C and 1 by root of mu naught epsilon naught gets cancelled. So, finally, we have 1 by A is equal to 1.841 divided by pi into R. So A value is uh, already mentioned in the question. A value is 3. So R value. Yes, as somebody had uh, typed in the chat box. Yeah, Jayanto, right. You are right. And Jyoti Chitra, yes. You are also right. Uh, the value of uh, radius of circular waveguide is 1.76 centimeters. Yes. Okay. So I hope uh, there are no doubts. If there are any doubts, you can always ask or type in the chat. Ma'am, that uh, 50 percentage, 30 percentage, uh, can you explain one more time, ma'am? Okay, what okay, okay. Cost? Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you, Jodhi Chitra, for asking that again. I think yeah. uh, I can go back to that question. So, so, let me try to explain it in a different way. So, let us uh, look at the question once again. So, like... This rectangular waveguide is operated at a frequency 30% above the cutoff frequency of the dominant mode. So, I am writing 
operating frequency is operating frequency is 30% above some cutoff frequency okay so we want to write this statement so when i say f not is 30% above fc means i need to add fc plus 30% of fc so 30 by 100 of fc okay so let me write it as so i can take fc outside and i can write 1 plus 30 by 100 is 0.3 so f naught will be equal to 1.3 fc okay so f naught is 30 percent above fc that means after fc 30 percent more of fc so that is why i wrote fc plus 30 percent of fc okay so we are operating the uh, wave, wave guide at a frequency greater than fc how much greater is 30 percent greater than fc okay oh okay clearly understood ma'am thank you very much mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you uh, so okay let us uh, look at some conceptual uh, uh, let us look at a conceptual question now so uh, so we need to look at some statements and find out which one of the following statements is not true. So let us look at the statements one by one. So the first statement is at an operating frequency above cutoff. So F naught greater than Fc. Okay. Operating frequency above cutoff guide wavelength. So that means lambda g in a waveguide is less than wavelength of plane wave in the medium filling the guide so it is saying that guide wavelength is less than lambda naught is this statement correct so let us look at the expression for guide wavelength lambda g is equal to lambda naught divided by square root of 1 minus fc by f the whole square or i can write it as f naught say suppose we are operating at a frequency f naught greater than fc so whenever f naught greater than fc you know that you will get a fc by f naught less than 1 and if you subtract 1 from that it will be a number less than 1 and lambda naught by divided by a number less than 1 will give you lambda g greater than lambda naught. I hope you followed it. If not, you can uh, repeat the sequence of events. So, we are looking at a frequency f naught greater than fc. Whenever f naught greater than fc, this will give me a value less than 1 and then subtract it from 1 again the answer is less than 1 and then you divide lambda naught divided by a number less than 1 you get lambda g greater than lambda naught. So the first statement is not true. I hope this is clear. If there are any doubts you can ask or I will move to the move on and check the second statement. So the second I just, uh, I was wondering, I mean, what happens when FC becomes greater than F0? Would not the denominator be a, a imaginary number then? Mm -hmm. And for that reason, yeah. So my question is, uh, mm -hmm. should not FC be always uh, less than F0? Yes, yes. Because otherwise it's unphysical, right? You get a... Yeah. Basically, imaginary. that's not a propagating mode. Yeah, okay. So, okay, let us move on to second option. For a given rectangular waveguide of dimensions A cross B, A greater than B, TE10 is always the dominant mode. 
Uh, I hope uh, by now you will be able to say whether this statement is true or not. Can you please ch type in the chat whether this statement B is true or not? For a rectangular waveguide, TE10 is always the dominant mode. Yes. Thank you, Jyoti and Kalpana. So, let us go to uh, statement C. For a circular waveguide, cutoff frequency of TE11 mode. So, let us say cutoff frequency of TE11 mode. So, let me quickly write the cutoff frequency rho 11 by 2 pi a root mu epsilon is always lower than cutoff frequency of TM01 mode. So, when I say TM01 mode, rho 1 0 divided by 2 pi a root of mu epsilon. Now, these denominators are same. So, the only point is whether rho 1 1 and rho 1 0 which is bigger. So, if you look at the table for this, uh, in, this is in case of TE, please make sure that this you make sure you, when you check you please ensure that you look at the appropriate columns. This is TE and this is TM. So, rho 1 1 of uh, TE is from the table it is 1.841 and rho 1 0 for TM is 2.405. So, let me say this. This is always larger. So, FC of TM 0 1 will be larger always. Or FC of TE11 is lower. So, statement C is also a true statement. Let me go to the last statement. For a TE10 mode of propagating in an air filled waveguide, wave impedance is higher than intrinsic impedance. So, we need to look at the equation for Z TE. Z TE is eta naught divided by root of 1 minus fc by f not the whole square for uh, so th for in this case as you have seen in the problems also always you get z te which is greater than eta naught eta naught is a free space impedance 377 ohms even when you were solving you have you might have already noticed we get an impedance greater than 377 ohms so this is also a true statement so i hope uh, uh, if this is clear, uh, any doubts? Thank you all for uh, listening. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, we can discuss or we will close the session. Uh, at any point of time, if you have any doubts, you can always use the... Uh, 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 discussion forum. Uh, my request is uh, thank you, thank you all of you. My request is to keep the uh, keep motivate, keep yourself motivated, and uh, uh, keep uh, uploading the assignment. Uh, I mean, attending the attempting the assignment questions. Uh, thank you, thank you all.